chap started this club in the early 50s and he came to me to borrow money. I wanted us to invest, for a want of a better word, and we wouldn't because we said squash. What squash? We're not going to invest in a squash club. It's not only that he coaches a varying um, you know, abilities and age groups, but it's, it's actually what he's teaching. And yes, some of it is squash. Some of it is squash. Well, he's famous for the Pontefract cake, the licorice cake. A place is only a place unless the people are great, and this is a great place. He's become the fourth Englishman to become world number one. Well, there you have it, Lee Beach for the first time winning his first US Open. Can you describe a typical Pontefract person to me? Down to earth, Yorkshire, no edge, and walk back with his bloody money. That also means that as of January 1st, 2012, you'll be the world number one. <laughs> yeah. To have my dad here, Malcolm, who was, what, where can I start? The amount of, um, you know, kind of uh, attention he's given to me and that's where it, that's where it came out today. David, my brother, the endless sessions, the endless work he's put in, and Mick, to have them here. If I do go to world number one on October the 1st, it's just a, a dream come true for me and uh, something that I've been working for my entire life, and, uh, and if that happens, I'll be absolutely delighted. Well, congratulations again for the US Open. It'll be uh, great to see your name as world number one uh, at the next rankings. A brief history of the club, X mining town. I can view out of the back windows uh, the site of the Prince of Wales Colliery. It was opened and built by the miners. 1976 opened in 1977, where we had originally NCB leagues, Metro leagues, which is National Coal Board leagues. It had originally six courts, went up to 11 courts, and then um, some changes came about, went back down to eight courts, where it currently stands to this day. Since Mick, it's really taken off, because it went through a real bad lull in the, I think it was about early 90s, late 80s. But now it's ended up as a bit of a drinking place, you know, but it's more for families now. I mean, Mick has put so much effort into, well, a lot of his life into this club to, he firstly saved it when it was in some pretty dire issues 15 years ago, maybe. Um, I mean, I remember training on, I think it was one or two, um, and you know there were towels. We had towels on the court, and there was a, there was a, a, a but there's been a bucket. I mean, I remember that. Uh, and I've you know the, those sort of um, un, unforgettable words of Malcolm's as, as he stood on his perch, you know, play this routine, but just mind the bucket. Um, that 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 happened, and it, it, it's now a great place, which is it's got a roof. It's it's um, it's in good shape. The membership's flying high. 
it's a busy place, it's um, renovated frequently, it's, it's in healthy condition, but that's down to Mick. Um, for me to be able to come in every day after school or as a, as a young kid in the holidays, um, to, to play in the kids' room and uh, run around the place on a Friday night and to watch league matches um, on a Wednesday night, you know, those were such formative experiences. This club was just, it's just been more than a home really. I mean, I, I can't keep away from the place. I still come here and train because it's the best facility that, I, that there is really and the, the, there's the best coaching. It's the warmest feeling when you walk through the door and I've, I've had it since I was three years old. So we let any child at any age be a part of what the club is about. So it doesn't matter if they're one year old and they can come on the court and they can just play and be a part of, of this club. The atmosphere in the club is always friendly, everybody's welcomed and encouraged. I think that's the key thing, the children are encouraged to play. It doesn't matter what standard they are. You, we find that there's really good players emerge and those that aren't going to be really good players, but they'll just play. They want to be involved in the club and we encourage all different levels. Obviously, I'm from down south, my husband is, so when we kind of first came to the club, we really didn't know what to expect. But, I mean, 14 lovely years on, we are very much... Um, I mean, in the mindset that this isn't just a club, it's a community. Um, we've seen children grow up and go off to university and children that are coming in, siblings and so forth. And I just think it is a huge community club. The general consensus is that you kind of respect each other. Every day when I walk in, you see a lot of familiar faces and they you know, uh, welcome you with a smile on their face. Just like home, so it feels very warm coming back here every time. The club is it's very friendly, I feel like uh, it's very warm, everyone is very loving and caring and, and you walk in here, everyone is smiling, so it's a very pleasant environment, you, you, you feel comfortable from day one, you don't feel like you're away from home, they make it very cosy and special for you when you get here. So. It's just so welcoming, isn't it? I mean, there's nowhere that you can go really where it's more welcoming. And it's just like a big family. I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. Nobody is too great to play against anybody in the club. You know, James Wilstrop this week has been on court with some of the county players, some of the non-county players that, that train on a tea time. So they get the opportunity to play amongst the best players in the world. And it's not made to be any different. You know, they may be in awe of him, but it's like, just get on the court and just play, and that's how Malcolm is. It doesn't matter who you are, you go on the court and you play with whoever's there to play that day. So whilst people aspire to be those players, it's amazing in this sport that they can get to be a part of what they're doing on a daily basis. Unlike other, other sports where you see they're kind of separated, segregated, not here, not a Pontifact. You, know, you, you play with whoever Malcolm tells you to play with on that day. It's down to, I think, Mick and Malcolm are prime people in this place, but there's an, an awful lot of people who are contributing to the, to the way Pontefract Squash Club is run. You know, they're passionate about the place. I remember it so vividly as a kid, you know, going with Malcolm in the car to clubs Heaton, um, Harrogate, to Chapel A, you know, playing all these clubs, watching the Yorkshire League teams playing. Uh, it, and I'm just, I was in touch with the top players, so it's just like, yes, it's great to get to the British Open or the big tournaments, but you, if you've got it in your own club, it's just so valuable. It's right there for you. You can touch it. You, your kids can feel this, you know, it, they can do it. Um, that's what I felt, and I can see it now. You see it, and you try and remember it. I'm, I'm trying to get my training done every day, but I think we've also got responsibility to these kids as well because they're seeing us and we could help them to, you know, to do something. Um, but it is, it's, a, it's a, hu a huge motivation being around the place because you just, you just come always motivated to, you know, to try and achieve what's going on here, the, the standard that's going on. So we like to win, although that's not our main goal. What we like to do here is have a good time, produce people, right from the juniors, from two years old, upwards, whatever, to be the best they can but more importantly, the best person they can.
good line on the cross court. No, you didn't lead with your left foot. Look, and you turn the racket over. Lead in with the left on that shot. Very good. He was there, but good shot. See how good she is there. Look at that. Go on. Oh, come on, Paul Cole. What are you doing? Angles hit the side wall or the back wall first. He's contracted at the club by himself. He's, we don't pay him. We don't pay him a retainer or anything. So he can pick and choose who, who comes here and plays. The criteria to play here is if you're a good person, you're loyal, you're honourable, you're hardworking, you love what you're doing, you smile, you keep your mouth shut. Uh, and if you don't take yourself too seriously, but are hard working, and you want, you want to learn, you want to work hard, then it, it doesn't matter what colour, creed, nationality you are, he will have them here. People come to me and want their kids to come, they're sending me their resume of, uh, of, the, of the child's you know, accreditation in, in, in squash. I said, don't send me that. Are they a good kid? Are they happy? Are they punctual? Do they work hard? Uh, do they respect their elders? Very good. What are you doing? Humpty. Match wall, you're there. Match to Bethany and Fern. Change sides. Jazz serve to, to uh, Bethany. Jazz to Bethany. Change the scorers on there to practice your maths. Change the scorers to practice your sums. On you go. He's got an incredible sense of humour, actually. I don't think... He doesn't take himself seriously, and that, that, that might surprise a few people. And he's great with the kids, you know, really good. And he loves that. I mean, that Sunday morning to him is, is almost like the highlight of the week. And, he, you know, the kids come up and he's got oranges and apples and chocolate lollipops and things. And, you know, they, they just they enjoy being around him, which, which shows, obviously, he's, he's, you know, for somebody who's such a strict disciplinarian, yet he can be, you know, he loves children. I mean, I've known him since we were seven. I mean, he, he married my mum when I was nine. Uh, had James, uh, so we got the same mum. You know, my stepdad. I've lived with him for 10 years, 11 years. So, yeah, I know, I know him as well as anyone, and um, squashing his life, and he's here every day. He's always here for the players, regardless of where they are. You know, he's always here for everybody. On the red line, he's out. On the imaginary line, he's out. Don't play on. Just out, quite right, Bethany. Suddenly flying Fern, I don't know why, but flying. They let Malcolm run the way he wants to run. Now, he wouldn't be able to do that because he's so different and probably quite politically incorrect. Thank you very much, it was good. Good. Don't, don't clap them, they'll get false ideas. Malcolm Wilshot's Marmite, and you actually love it or you hate it. So it doesn't go around courting friends or friendships. So it's free, actually, very free in a position to be able to just do what he does. And he's in a privileged position, really. I mean, he works seven days a week. If there were eight, he would work eight days a week on something he loves to do. And he's as proud of his guys on his Thursday night who might be in League Five um, as, as his Lee Beach or whatever. And there's definitely a soft side. To oh, this, yeah. Yeah, he's lovely. He's a pussy cat. Pickle con man, you. You owe me a quid. You're a little con man. In. Good volley. It was in. It was in. Playing well in front of the cameras, you people. Just as well. Good shot, Alec. I've watched the junior scene evolve, and as Malcolm came in, he grew um, the junior coaching. And because I wanted to put back into squash after playing as a junior myself, I can started to work alongside Malcolm. With the little ones, it could be quite chaotic. He lets them just run around, getting a racket, hitting the ball on the floor, and it's just good fun. And they just want to be there with him. What's interesting is they come, to, they come to Malcolm at a young age when they've not really had any influence elsewhere. And within four or five years, they're, they're winning British junior titles and so on. And Cassie went on to become world number one, world champion. Um, yeah, and it all, it all happened. I mean, it, I don't think of it, I can think of anybody else who can do that from scratch, you know, from, from literally nappies. I mean, 
the James and, and all the other players, they come through Mal's system from, from right from the beginning, right, right through. You know, if you look at someone like Sam, he, he's not really, I don't think, I mean, Mark might, might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he's actually been on court with Sam. And he's the world's best player for his age. And he's very, he's very gifted, and he's very skillful, and he's very technical. Well, I've been coached by him all my life, uh, as long as I can remember. And uh, he has certain rules, which people may find a bit out of order the way he does things. Some people love it, some people don't like it at all, but and most coaches will actually come on court and have one-to-ones, uh, but Malcolm there is different and I think that's what he is known for. Very rarely goes on court, even when he was younger, very rarely went on court. I think it's a unique style, like you, you can find coaches who step on court and they have a similar approach, but Malcolm's approach is a little different. He, he directs stuff from up here and he lets players go through game routines and practices which are very free. He'll, he'll throw in conditions, but a lot of it is very, you know, find it out for yourself and he'll, he'll shout out directions and, and he'll ease you into ways of playing. Even the drills you end up doing here is very different compared to the stuff we do with the other coaches. So I think it just brings this kind of different mindset to the way we play squash. Discipline is, is a must with him. Uh, but underneath is a big softy. He, he bellows orders from, from, from the balcony where, where we stood now. Volley, get it straight. Hold, delay, behave. <laughs> it does help you along the way uh, as like a better squash player and a better person. How strict he is with you and um, like one foot out of line and uh, he'll, he'll either ban you or have a serious word with you. We had difficulties because I was a, a little brat at times and I needed to sort it out like most kids do. They don't understand the way he works and you need to toe the line and I had to toe the line like any other kid. So I, he sent me off and he banned me like, like everyone else. Um, so I'm, I'd be silly to say that it was all smooth running. And obviously we had that added thing that I'm his son and there's a parent-son parent thing going on, which is very, very difficult. I mean, mo you know, that doesn't really work for a lot of people. Um, so, so that sort of father-son thing, it never, it never became pushy, it never became heavy for me. We got on really well and now we're really good friends. So it's been, it's been good and it's worked, but it is unusual, I think. What Malt does, um, it's, a, it's a culture, basically. and. It's like a lifelong thing, a journey. So with Malcolm, it's very rare that you have a player that comes and goes like two years, have a bit, a few lessons, and then improves and goes. With Malk, it's it's very it's a lot deeper than that, and he creates that. So it's it's almost like you fit in to the culture, or you go, regardless of how good you are. Chase every ball. Don't swing round, Michael, too much. Hold your position. In. Right shot, just played a bit early. Correct, Catherine, the shot. Choice of shot, correct. It is quite strict. I, th I think the, the key thing, like before you even come here, you know that you've got to be disciplined, you've got to behave well. Uh, he's very technical. He does not step on court with you, but like any small mistake, he keeps calling you out for it and, and he just does not let anything go by, which, uh, which makes you disciplined as a player as well, because then you kind of try to change it and correct it every time. If you look at James and Beach and all the players that he's had through his, his, his system, really, they all hit the ball quite differently. They all look different when they play and have different styles. And that's, that's the thing, Malcolm will just encourage that, that expression and, and you play to your personality. You know, Lee's, Lee's quite straight and, and that's how he lives his life. You know, he, he's, he's very uh, no fuss, you know, and it, it was a very accurate way of playing, very straight and uh, didn't like to open the court up too much. Whereas James likes showing off, a little bit more flamboyant, and that's the way he played, but he got, got the same coach. Got past you now, dear. Balls are going to the wrong side a lot, on both sides, should not be happening. If you're controlling it well, should not be happening. Off the back. When it hits the glass at the back, it goes quickly, be ready for it. On there, you can play any shot. Don't score, any shot, all three. Any shot, same order.
That's good and straight, and that's good and straight. It's all good, clear, well played, you three, go on. Good rally. That's all right as well. He's got an air and a grace about him, the way that he carries himself and, uh, and even the way that he speaks. His delivery, and he's got a lot of care for, his, for the people that he coaches, but he's also, he's very professional about it. You're overhitting your serve, get it wider. Very good, Alex, that. Your serve is too hard, look, and not wide enough. Get it lighter and onto the wall. Good, very good. I like the feet then. Jazz, your feet were good on the angle. You've got to clear just a bit quicker and a bit more, Jody. You tend to just stand a little. Clear. With Malcolm, it was always fun. I loved his sessions really very much. In meeting Malcolm and, and many others here, that's a pretty special place and um, uh, it's unique. I, I, I think it's unique. Um, not very often you will see a world-class coach coaching senior players and two-year-olds all in the same week and everything in between. Wow. You know, and that in itself says a whole lot. This is a beautiful game and Malcolm coaches it in a beautiful way. It's consistent work, it's discipline. Um, it allows people to express themselves. So, you, you know, you'll hear him talking about, he has daily sessions on and these, these young players come in and it makes it accessible to them and affordable. So you're paying, you know, five pound a session and you're on court for an hour and a half, but you can do that five times a week. He, you know, it's more than that, it's, it's, the, it's the way he, he commands a certain level of behaviour, a certain standard, and you have to either fit in with that or you leave. He, he'll have a joke and a, a smile at the appropriate times, but you know, when it's time to work, it's time to work. There's certain standards that he conveys, you know, such as, you know, <laughs> and I've, I've been coached by him, he throws me on the court with world-class players from time to time when I've visited, and, and if I show a moment of anger or even a gesture, or he jumps right on top of you, and, it, and that's good. You know, it wasn't sort of, I'm not, you know, it wasn't, he wouldn't put us through really complicated practices. It was just hit the ball, get on there, play, you know, find it for yourselves, really. He isn't a coach who has a very set formula, and I think that's a really clever thing, and I think it's brilliant, actually, because not a lot of coaches have very set ways of coaching. The game's about precision, and if you're, if you're rushing around, then there's a stress element to it, the heart rate flies up, there's no clarity. Mal just wants you to just be, have clarity of whatever you're doing on the court, and pick your shots out and just do shot selection. He puts you through exercises where you have to think, doesn't give you the answers, he, he makes you figure it out for yourselves a, a lot, uh, even with technique. And then, like I say, you're on with really good players, so you're learning from them, you're feeding for them, so you're learning to control the ball. And then you're getting on with really good people and you're doing it day in, day out. You're bound to improve, aren't you? I just think that that's what it's down to, really. His, his genius is that he turns up every week and he's there every week. He's so passionate about the game and he gets these kids on court so often in an enjoyable atmosphere. And a lot of coaches, I think, are possibly coaching, you know, once or twice a week in a less enjoyable atmosphere on a one-to-one -one basis where it's all about pressure. And you just can't do that with kids. I don't think you can. You, kids need to enjoy the sport, first and foremost. You know, uh, coming here, Malcolm gives us a different view of, you know, what, like, one-on-one -on -one sessions do and what he sees from top. You can say he gives us the eagle eye view. It inspires me. Um, it's an environment that I have gone away to try to replicate in my working environment. Played it going out left, almost a stroke. Good job I don't give stroke. That's good, keep mixing it up. That's good, you're varying it well there. It's a good rally, girls, go on. It's good. That's good. It's good that, because you're mixing it up. Chase every ball, don't swing round Michael too much. Hold your position. In. Right shot, just played a bit early. Came over too quickly, Aka. Okay. 
Did well, Laura, go on. You do, you do buy into him because he, he's very authentic. You know, he, wants, he wants the best for you and you want to please him. You know? And the teaching background has obviously clearly, clearly helped a lot, I would, I would say. Good. The disciplines that he's taught me have been a, a huge impact on, in what I've done as a squash player. Just because he's taught me those principles of keeping calm when things go wrong, keep keep the head, don't let the opponent hit, feel what you're thinking or feel the negative thoughts, even though they're there. You know that that's really helped, and I think that's the one mainstay of him. Because of him, all the players who have come out from here, that he's made them. You know, he sees, he has a good eye for like you know future champions, that he makes champions. He's paid his dues in squash, and he's invested so much of his heart and his time. And I get, I get emotional actually because he's he's an amazing person. And even to the, you know, he works seven days a week. He's here for our children. And people that might whinge or complain or don't like the way he approaches the situation, well, tough. Go somewhere else. I would not be without him. Uh, he's been here years, I've known him years. And I just think he's got gold dust and that bit of gold dust we need to try and extract. I think the success is down to a, a few different factors really. Key people at the right time, uh, keeping the club going and keeping it alive. Um, uh, when we didn't have much funding and things like that and it nearly went under, so you have key people there that drove it forward. Mick Todd obviously being one of the key people. Um, Malcolm, I mean, for me, you put them two together and you've got a very successful environment, haven't you? There's, you know, there's life in the club, it's a community um, and you, you really feel part of it and you grow with it and um, I think that's really hard to create. It's not artificial, it's something that's organic, that's grown over decades. Our, I think our lives are a lot richer for being part of this club, absolutely. We've made so many friends and we've learnt so much and we've grown as a family, so. It just shows that it's, it has to be down to his system, it has to be. There's just nothing else, it's the, it's the only factor. He makes that system work and he's here every single day. You know, he just turns up and he's, and, and, and he's, on, he's there for these kids. Malcolm's um, incredible coaching just draws people in and then that creates atmosphere. So every night his sessions are going on and then that's an extra 25, 30, 40 people in the club every night, which just gives it a lift. I mean, if, that, if, he, if he just disappeared, that wouldn't be there and it would be, there would be an emptiness. It feels like it's almost an extension of your front room. It yeah. is. I think I spend more time here than I do at home. I, I just simply, you know, can't really put it any other way than I, I just wouldn't have, have sort of been able to fashion the career I have without, of course, Malcolm's coaching, but obviously this being here and we need, as professional players need facilities, we need clubs, we need communities more than anything. It's not, it's not the facility is it's very secondary really, you know, you can find a squash court anywhere, but you just cannot find a what warms and a social network um, and a people you love and a family, you can't find this everywhere. It's just, it's very precious and it's, that's why I've, I keep coming back every, you know, three times a week. I still come to this place and I still bring my kids here. So it's, you know, it's just, um, that's how much it, that's how important it's been. We were talking about it the other day, how incredible it is for him to have produced from scratch two world number ones and one who at present, I mean, if he's, he might stop tomorrow, Sam Todd, but he's, he's just an absolutely outstanding junior squash player. Those three are just, you know, all about him, all about his system. And it's something, you think three of them could come out of this club in 20 years. It's just, it's just not, it's just people don't do that. So if you could describe Mark in one word, what would that word be? Brilliant. Oh, wow, that's blimey. I think a lot, lots of words. Uh, I don't know, what would it be? Um, 
bit messy, isn't he? <laughs> Oh, gosh, one word. Legend. It's not about the town, it's not about that Pontefract has more talented kids who can hit squash, but it's nothing to do with that. It's about the system that the club is inviting, kids can come in, they've got the motivation, they've got Malk's unbelievable system. I mean, it's just like a recipe for, you know, it's just making players, isn't it? The value of Malcolm. We'll only know that when he's gone, actually, I think. There's lots of players that he's got to world number one, but from a junior level, from actually from a little boy or girl, uh, we produced two world number ones and hope maybe another one coming now in Sam. And all I can say about the three people there, every single one of them is different athletically, different personality, and totally different people, all three. They play the beautiful game, similar to how Malcolm likes the games we've played, but all totally different. So, yes, they all could have made the grade, but there's some connection in all of them why they have become world number one. And I do believe that connection is Malcolm Musso. Life, the important thing is not how you were a champion like Lee and James, that's wonderful. But then it's about any child fulfilling what they've got. We cater for everybody and that's what the game should do, shouldn't it? That's what life's about, really.